Hi parents and students, I wanted to make a video that might help you out with uh, our math standard that we're going to be working on for the next little while. Now the standard says that we can write numbers in standard form, written form, expanded notation, and models. And so I wanted to go through this very quickly so that parents, you at home, uh, might be able to help your students with what we're working on in class and also see the ways that I'm teaching it. So the first thing is going to be standard form. Now standard form is uh, something that all students have, been work have worked on all the way since kindergarten and really it's just a fancy way, uh, fancy name for the way we normally write a number. So to give you an example of some numbers in standard form, we have 456, 578, 132, 92, and 204. Now uh, st students typically don't uh, get make a lot of mistakes with writing numbers in standard form. However, where they will make mistakes is if I orally say a number, for example, 456, they might mix up those numbers in the tens and the ones, and they might accidentally write 465. So that's something we need to watch out for. Moving on to uh, some of the newer stuff for our students is written form. Now, written form is a challenge for students in second grade mostly because of the spelling. Now, I always want to tell students that this is not a spelling test. However, I do need to know what, be able to tell what number you are trying to write. So, it's just a fancy way of writing the words you say when you read the number. So, let's go with those examples again that we used earlier. So, when we read it just as standard form, we say 456. So, written form is going to be exactly the same, 456. Let's do a few more examples. 578, 578, 132, 132. And finally, 92, 92, actually I think we have one more, there we go. 204 is 204. Now the areas students make mistakes with is uh, they will once again, they might just write 456 instead of 456. Or they may write 400, five, six, um, or they may, uh, instead of, for example, saying 70, they might write 17, okay? Now remember, it's not about spelling, but if you write 70, and I think that you're writing 17, and you're supposed to write 17, that would be a mistake because I will think you're saying 70. All right, now, moving on. Uh, expanded notation, it's also called expanded form. And we're going to use the same numbers we used before, but what expanded notation or expanded form does, it's a fancy way of showing all the values of the digits in a number. So, once again, let's look at these same numbers. We have 456. It comes to 400 plus 50 plus 6. Okay, 578, 500 plus 70 plus 8. 132 becomes 100 plus 30 plus 2, 92, 90 plus 2, or some students may write 0 plus 90 plus 2 uh, because there's no number in the hundreds place. And lastly, 204 becomes 200 plus 0 plus 4, or 200 plus 4. Some students, it really helps them to put that 0 in there as a placeholder, and that would be a correct answer as long as they don't put a value in the tens. Now, I'm going to demonstrate very quickly one of the strategies that I teach my students uh, to break down a number. I call it my hundreds, tens, ones strategy, and you may have seen some students putting it on uh, their problems in their homework. Now, what I would do is take a number like 456, and I draw lines in between them, and I write O, T, H. And what that stands for is ones, tens, and hundreds. Now, what I want the students to be able to look, see, is that when they look at the number, they can see that a four in the hundreds place, they tell themselves, what is the value of a four in the hundreds place? It's four hundreds or four hundred, okay? We connect the place values with an addition symbol. So moving on to the tens place, five tens, is 50. It has the value of 50. And lastly, 6 in the 1s has the value of 6, so plus 6. That's the way I teach my students to, uh, to solve the problems like that, and uh, that will just kind of reinforce what we're doing in class 
if you are doing this with your students at home. Okay, the last one is models. Now we'll call this model form or base 10 form. And what we're doing here is that we are showing the number, but we're showing it in base 10 blocks. So it's just a fancy way of showing all the base 10 blocks for that number. Let's quickly look at the same numbers we did before. Starting at the very beginning, 456. Now again, that hundreds, tens, ones strategy uh, might be a good, a good way for a student to figure out what models to draw if they are going from standard form to model form. So for example, once again, I draw my O, my T, and my H, which tells me ones, tens, hundreds, and I can look at the standard form number, I need four hundreds, okay, we re those represent our hundreds, five tens, those represent our tens, and six ones. Okay, so now that's just a very quick look at, uh, at the different model forms, and I know I've gone through this very fast, but luckily you guys have the availability to go back and rewind and catch something else that you might have missed. So uh, next we're going to move on to a way that you might be able to help your students at home practice some of these number forms. Okay, now for a quick exercise that you may be able to do at home to help your student kind of uh, understand from taking a number from any of these forms and creating it into the different one. I've created a simple chart here that shows standard form, written form, expanded notation, and models. Now we do some of the, we're going to be doing some of these in class, and it, but it could easily be recreated at home. Uh, one great way to do it is to just fill in one form for a number on different lines and ask your student to try and fill in the rest of the blanks. So for example, in this uh, first one, we have only the expanded notation version of the number. We see that we have 300 plus 40 plus five. We need to fill in standard form, written form, and the models. Now, uh, some students might find certain forms easier, and I encourage them to do the one that they find easiest first. However, uh, for me, what I like to do is always start in standard form and using that same ones, tens, and hundreds strategy that we learned earlier. So I would go over into my standard form, I just draw those lines and create once again an O stands for ones, a T that stands for tens, and an H that stands for hundreds. Now I can look at my number and I can see that the very first number on here is 300. So when I have the number 300, what value is it going to have in standard form? And 300 is going to have a value of a 3 in the hundreds place. So we fill in our 3. Next we move into our tens place, or to our next number. We have 40. Now 40, what value is that going to have in our tens place? It's going to have the value of 4 tens. And finally, plus 5, 5 has the value of 5 or 5 ones. So by doing that, we can see that the number 300 plus 40 plus 5 in expanded notation becomes 345 in standard form. Now, a reminder for a written form, the best way I tell students to solve problems in written form is just to write the words that they say. So when I say 345, make sure that after you wrote it, that you write it down, it reads back to you as 345. So sometimes I have students break it down into the words and start with just the beginning. So for example, start with 300. So 300. Okay, then go back and check. 300. Good, I'm on the right track. Now to finish it off, I know I need to write 45 because I already have 300. So 45. Come back. 45. And finally, just to double check my answers, I read it. In standard form, 345, and in written form, 345. Now, uh, is, this is not a spelling test, remember, so if your students are struggling to spell some of the numbers at first, that is okay. That will come with time. Uh, one other big uh, misconception or mistake that students will always make is that they will write 345. 
I try to remind them that in written form, and is not a number. So we are only writing numbers. And lastly, our models. Models for me goes, is easiest to go back to standard form with my hundreds, tens, and ones chart. And it just tells me simply that I need three hundreds, because the three is underneath the hundreds. Now, we represent our hundreds with bigger squares. I'm not an artist, as you can see, but as long as I can tell what they're trying to do, that's going to be just fine. Into our tens place, we need four tens. Okay, so write those on there. The tens, they're tall, but they're skinny. Okay. Three hundreds, four tens, and lastly, five ones. Our ones are little cubes. One, two, three, four, five. Now, just off of our expanded notation, uh, 300 plus 40 plus 5, we were now able to use strategies like our 1s, 10s, 100s strategy and solve for model form, written form, and standard form. Now we can continue this uh, endless amounts of times. Parents, you can make up numbers. You can have students make up numbers in standard form and fill in the rest. Uh, but this is just one really good exercise that is going to help your student understand the different forms of the same number. I hope you guys found this useful. Like I said, I went very quickly. If you need to go back and rewind and watch something again, please do. Let me know if you have any questions or anything else you want me to demonstrate on the video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.